Almost every devout Catholic has a devotion to Mary. From the great saints to our recent popes, Mary played a major role in their spirituality. For the Redemptorists, Mary is mother for all. And we promote the devotions of our Mother of Perpetual Help in a special and personal way because of the commission given to us by Pope Pius IX to make her known. We have all experienced God because of His grace. But the one who is truly full of grace is none other than Mary. Let us sing of this amazing grace that has saved us by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus as we enter our second novena in preparation for Easter. Once again, a warm welcome to all of you that love this devotion. Let's begin and bless ourselves in the Trinity, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, we are truly grateful to God for the many blessings we have received from Him, to the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Let us once more ask her to pray with us and for us. We bring to you now Global Intentions, intentions that are important because these intentions need to be prayed for and the global praying community is here with us let's pray together in the spirit here are our intentions for the week the presentation of the lord is celebrated 40 days after the birth of jesus which is the presentation of jesus in the temple at jerusalem it is also known today as Candle Mass Day, where the blessing and procession of candles is observed.
The priest blesses the candles which we will be using on our home altars this year. The blessed candles that are kept for use by the faithful in their homes should be a sign of Christ, the light of the world and an expression of faith. Heavenly Father, we come before you in thanksgiving for the gift of baptism and confirmation, moments when we were presented to you in the embrace of faith. In our baptism, you claimed us as your own, washing us in the waters of baptism. In confirmation, your Spirit descended upon us, empowering us to live boldly as witnesses of your love. We now entrust ourselves to your loving care, knowing that with each step we take, we are presented to you as a living testament of your grace. We pray with Mother Mary. Assist us, O loving Mother. The World Interfaith Harmony Week was proposed by His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan at the United Nations General Assembly in September 2010. The most important goal of this observation is to get people to realize that our common values of love, faith and kindness easily outweigh our differences. In a world rich with diversity, let us celebrate the beauty of understanding and harmony that comes from embracing different faiths. May the spirit of world interfaith harmony inspire us to work together, hand in hand, towards a world where the richness of our indifference is celebrated and where we stand united in our commitment to build a future of peace and goodwill. For this we pray. Assist us, O loving Mother. World Day of Consecrated Life is observed on February the 2nd each year. It is a day set aside by the Catholic Church to honour and pray for men and women in consecrated life. The day is an opportunity for the Church and the faithful to appreciate the dedicated service and commitment of those in consecrated life. Loving Father, in our devotion today, we come before you with hearts filled with gratitude for the men and women who have consecrated their lives to you. Thank you for their unwavering commitment, their selfless devotion and their inspiring example of living for a higher purpose. In their consecration, they reflect your light and love in unique and profound ways. Bless these dedicated hearts who have chosen to walk a path of service, prayer and sacrifice. May their lives be a testament to the transformative power of your grace. For this we pray. Assist us, O loving Mother. Holocaust Memorial Day observed annually on January the 27th commemorates the liberation of the Auschwitz birkenau concentration camp in 1945. It serves as a poignant reminder of the Holocaust, where six million Jews and millions of other minority groups were systematically terminated by the Nazi regime. By acknowledging the atrocities, society can strive to prevent the repetition of such horrors and promote tolerance, diversity and human rights. Father of Mercy, Today in our devotion we bow our heads in solemn remembrance of the horrors of the Holocaust, the unfathomable suffering, the loss of innocent lives and the depths of human cruelty. We stand in the shadow of history's darkest chapter where hatred and prejudice led to unimaginable pain. Grant eternal rest to the souls of the departed and bring comfort to those who still bear the scars of the tragic period. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers for healing, reconciliation and the promise that the horrors of the past may never be repeated. In the name of your boundless love, we pray. Assist us, O loving Mother. Together we turn to our Heavenly Father and pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let me now share with you the letters that have come in asking for Mother Mary's intercession. Dearest Mother of Perpetual Help, I thank you for the recent operation that I had. I prayed to you and asked you to intercede for me. I was less afraid when I realized that many people were also praying for me. Thank you, Mother, as my faith has grown and so has my prayer life from your loving Son. Dearest Mother Mary, I thank you for the retreat which I recently attended. I was able to understand the mysteries of my faith a little better. I pray that more inspiring presenters will help in our faith formation. I thank God for the spiritual formation I'm going through and now I look forward to other talks on social media from your loving daughter. Dearest Holy Mother, I ask for your blessings and intercession. My sister and I have gone for a blood test in the hope of being compatible for a bone marrow transplant for our younger brother. We pray that the results are favorable and it will be a successful procedure. Amen. Dear Mother Mary, please help me intercede. Pray for our son as he will be having his first round interview for scholarship on February the 15th. May he get the scholarship and lead him to the university and degree that God wants him to pursue. May God's Holy Spirit be upon him and may he do well in the first round interviews with peace, wisdom and clarity and speak clearly. May he get the second interview also from your grateful daughter. Dearest Mother, I'm going for a knee replacement surgery. I humbly request the Father, Son and Holy Spirit to be with the doctors and nurses and Mother. Be with me, giving strength and courage during the surgery, believing everything will go well and a speedy recovery after my surgery from your humble daughter. Dear Mary, my house is full of clutter and I find it so overwhelming. I am at a loss at how to clear it. I have difficulty of letting things go, things from the past. Please intercede that I may be able to let go and get rid of anything which is not necessary. Dearest Mother of Perpetual Help, I humbly ask for your powerful intercession to help me overcome the depression that I am going through. My examination results will be out soon and it will decide my future career. Currently, I am studying for another examination and I pray to your Most Holy Son, Jesus Christ, to guide me and be with me during the ups and downs that I face. Please continue to intercede for all my needs from your grateful daughter. With all these requests and petitions, we turn to the loving mother and pray the prayer of confidence. Mother of Perpetual Help, we come to you and place our trust in you. You are a mother of mercy. You are called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then our refuge and our hope. Help us for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch out your hand to us poor sinners. We bless and thank God for giving us this confidence in you. In the past, we have so often sinned, but with your help we can conquer, and you will help us if we pray to you. In all our temptations, may we always turn to you and say, Mary, help me. Let me never lose my God. Amen. Let us share with Mary her prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. 
The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is His name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear Him. He puts forth His arm in strength and scatters the proud-hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel his servant, remembering his mercy, the mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary, you are the mother of Christ. And you are our mother also. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you with all our heart for giving us Mary to be our mother. She is so loving so thoughtful, so understanding, and so kind. We thank you for her. Amen. Many women have been crowned all kinds of queens, but there is only one befitting this title because she was specially chosen by God the Father. Join in this beautiful crowning hymn, Holy Mary, now we crown you. Thank you for inviting me to share a few words with you all today. Today I would like to talk about what's happening in Gaza, uh, where Israel has undertaken an assault, an almost genocidal action against the people of Gaza. And if, but if you ask many Christians, um, the idols will say that they support against the actions of the Israelis, or they will quietly approve of what the Israelis are doing in Gaza. Um, the problem is, many Christians today are influenced by the thinking of the evangelical Christian Zionists, um, which I think is quite different from what uh, Jesus proclaimed in the Gospels. Uh, Jesus talked about the Kingdom of God. The focus is on now, uh, and this Kingdom of God will help bring about justice, mercy, compassion and love in the world. And Jesus would be the Prince of Peace. Uh, after his resurrection, he told everybody, Peace be with you. But in contrast, the Christian Zionists focus on the end times uh, with the Jewish emigration to Israel, 
which they hope will speed up the second coming of Christ. Uh, eventually, there'll be a battle of Armageddon, and Jesus as the warrior king will uh, usher in a period of a thousand years, a millennial kingdom, uh, where there'll be peace and justice in the world. Um, but I have a feeling that this is quite different from the Gospels, where Christians are called to be the salt and light of the world. And this is a very empowering feeling, where you feel that you can actually bring about change in the world, you can make a difference in the world. This is quite unlike the Christian Zionist thinking, where people feel very helpless, look to the state of Israel and try to figure out when the end times are coming and when Jesus will return. Whereas our mandate is to help build the kingdom. It's a collaborative venture in the Gospels. Jesus not only proclaimed the kingdom, but we are expected to collaborate with the, with the kingdom to bring about a change in this world. Um, Jesus said that his ultimate wish was for everybody to be one, that they may all be one in unity. Um, but in Christian Zionist thinking, People of other faiths are seen as adversaries, for example, the Muslims. And even among the Jews, uh, they don't say, but they expect many of the Jews to convert. If not, they will be left behind in the rapture. Um, so this is quite different from the Kingdom of God, where we are also expected to engage in inter-religious dialogue with our fellow human beings. Um, so you can see there's a big difference between uh, Christian Zionist thinking and the Kingdom of God. Um, in the Kingdom of God, we have a huge task ahead of us to bring about change in the world. Whereas in under Christian Zionist thinking, um, basically you are disempowered and you leave it to you wait until the end of time for Jesus to come and change the world. So that's quite different. We are the ones called to bring about the change in the world, empowered by the Spirit uh, in the kingdom which Jesus heralded. So we have to make a difference in the world. And this is why I think Christian Zionist thinking is quite different from the Gospels. Christian Zionist thinking originated in the early 19th century in the UK, spread to the US, and eventually to all parts of the world, many parts of the world. And it's, it has influenced many Christians today so that they see um, Israel as, people of Israel as the chosen ones. Uh, in the Bible, the people of Israel were asked to act justly, walk tenderly with God and be humble. But you don't see that being practiced by the Israeli regime against the Gazans. So, Again, there's a quite different uh, understanding of Christianity here. Uh, we are called to be humble, to act justly and walk tenderly, act tenderly towards others. Um, so this is my sharing for today. So be careful when you think about Christianity. It's quite different from what the evangelical Christian Zionists are proclaiming. Thank you. Together in one faith, we turn to the Blessed Mother and pray the Memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection, implored you help and sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, my Mother. To you I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in your mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you bore our sufferings and carried our sorrows. Hear our prayers for the sick. Help them to unite themselves with your sufferings and if it is your will, may they get better. Let them never forget that you care for them. Amen. Mm. 
Mary, from thy sacred image, with those eyes so sadly sweet, Mother of perpetual succor, see us kneeling at thy feet. Given them bread from heaven. Let us pray, O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memorial of your passion. We ask you to enable us so to worship the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may constantly feel in our lives the effects of your redemption. You live and reign forever and ever. Jesus, in 
come to the end of this beautiful devotion. It's something so spiritual and I just love being here at this time knowing that we always gather in prayer because Jesus says where two or three are gathered even more so when it's a devotion to Mary. Mary is here with us to intercede, to listen to our prayers and everything to bring it to the Son. So let's end with this beautiful hymn once again. See you all next week. Don't forget to join us subscribe and to our friends and benefactors thank you for your generosity see you next week we are all dreamers in one way or another filled with love and God we take on the impossible dream join us once again next week to dream the impossible dream to fight the unbeatable foe to bear the unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go to write the unwritable wrong To love pure and chaste from afar To drive when your arms are too weary To reach the unreal to Bird.